Howdy, this is Tubal Kane again, and this time to do a series of videos on bolt circles. Now many of you have watched me build these small engines and invariably I'm using these spoked flywheels that I make and they're made out of lead and I prefer the looks of a spoked flywheel but in reality you're not going to be able to make one of these at home unless you make the mold and, and go through all that work and it sure isn't worth it for just one of. So uh, for your purposes at home uh, making a steel flywheel like this is uh, preferable. That's two and a half inch steel about three eighths thick and it can be dished out like this as shown in some of my videos but would look better with a series of holes in it and uh, that's what we're going to do today is uh, space out the holes. I'm going to do four different videos on bolt circles and uh, this will be video 153 on using the digital readout coordinate method and then uh, the next one will be on the rotary table and the index head or dividing head and finally just a layout method, the simplest method of all. So this is 153. I've already prepared several of the blanks and as I mentioned before it's a two and a half diameter cold rolled steel and I've already drilled and reamed a 3 16 hole in the middle and that isn't necessary to do right away. But uh, now I'm going to step over to the Bridgeport Mill and matter of fact the first three videos will be on the Bridgeport Mill and then the final one will just be done on the drill press. There are several different ways to uh, determine uh, the coordinates or the measurements for uh, the bolt circle or hole circle whatever you want to call it and if you're an old timer you probably use your trig tables but the easier method is to look it up on the internet just do a search for bolt circle and this particular one is uh, the little machine shop which is a vendor that many of you use but they have this uh, page here where you just plug in your numbers and you'll get results like we got right down here. Now you can use uh, any number of holes you want I think six look best uh, on a flywheel but that's up to you so all of these videos will be concerned with six holes. Now I've taken these uh, coordinates here and put them on another sheet which I will show you here momentarily. I made a drawing of the bolt circle and it's uh, not to scale but just to show you that uh, the X axis is left to right, Y is away from you if you're standing at the, the machine or toward you and uh, I've gone counterclockwise here with hole 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can do that the other way if you want. Remember that the center here, and there's a hole here, is uh, 0 for the X and 0 for the Y. Now for hole 1 we're going to move it over in the X axis to a minus 0.625 and the Y is left alone at 0. For hole 2, two the X uh, axis will be set at minus 0.312 and the Y at a plus 0.541 and so on working our way around. There are of course different ways that you can hold the work and I'm just holding it in the, the regular Bridgeport vise but it could be clamped directly to the table but on smaller work like this the clamps are usually in the way. So I'm using two thin parallels to hold it up off of the vise so I don't drill into the vise and I'm pushing against it with the movable jaw here with a V-block and uh, this should hold it securely. Now you don't want to drill into anything here so be careful of that. Next we need to locate the center of the hole with the uh, spindle center. Now there are different ways of doing that. That can be uh, indicated, it can be used, uh, done with an edge finder or a wiggler or whatever your preference is but uh, for this particular job we want it to be accurate but it doesn't have to be all that accurate and this method here is sufficient as far as I'm concerned and all I've done was move the table back and forth until I got a good uh, close fit here with this uh, rod, 3 16 rod that is in the drill chuck. And at this point then I have zeroed out the digital readout because that is my center position. 
I've moved the table and the uh, drill over into the correct position and I made an index card for uh, each hole, uh, mainly for instructional purposes, but it uh, is set now at x equals 0.625, that's a positive 625, and now I'm ready to drill. Now I did change the drill chucks here so that I have my Albrecht quick change because I'm going to do a lot of tool changing. And I like that because it's keyless. These cost a, a fortune too. Uh, but what I don't like about them is they're so much longer and, uh, th than a regular chuck. So you got that length there to deal with and you couple that with the length of your drill bit sometimes and it is problematic. So what I'm going to do with each hole is center drill it, uh, drill it a pile, pilot hole. This is about a 3 16th and notice that I'm using stubby bits. And then my final size is a, is a 7 16 and that's arbitrary. It could be 3 8 or, or half or whatever you want. But notice again, stubby bits so I don't have to deal with uh, dropping the table or uh, 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 having a problem here changing the tooling. I will have to drop the table a little bit when I get into that uh, 7 16 drill bit because that's all the clearance that I have right now. So I'm ready for hole one. There it is, center drilling hole number one. Now be sure and lock the table in both directions when you're doing your actual cutting. Let me get a little oil over here in a second. All you want to do is establish the hole with the center drill. Here I go with the 3 16 And this is the 7 16 drill. Now I've moved the table for hole 2, which is x equals 0.312, y equals 0.541. Now I'm not going to show all of these. Be sure and wear your safety glasses and observe all safety rules when you're drilling or doing any operation on the mill or for that matter any machine. And that's hole two already. Tubal Cain is embarrassed and has a quick correction. For hole number one that should have been uh, minus 0.625 instead of uh, positive. And same with hole two it should have been minus 0.312 rather than positive. Now hopefully I'm on the right track. Uh, hole 3 should be x uh, positive 312 and y is also positive uh, 541. I didn't put the positive on there but it's kind of assumed. I shouldn't assume anything but that's You don't want to break off that center drill. I could stand to slow that speed down one notch for this uh, larger bit. Hole four is positive X point six two five and a Y is zero.
that's it for hole four. For hole five, I've uh, reset the table. X equals positive 0.312 and Y equals minus 0.541. Be sure and watch my video where I make this uh, spill-proof oil can. I sure do like this keyless chuck. Now uh, we're going to drill hole 6 and that's x equals minus 0.312 and y equals minus 0.541. it for hole six. Remember, do not take the work out until the job is totally done. Alright, now I'm going to take it out and it is ready for deburring. At the drill press I took this uh, uh, countersink and countersunk all uh, six of them, but I just did it on one side. Uh, to show you because some of you will quit right now and uh, this is far you're going to go but I want to put it in the lathe and put uh, this little recess in there to kind of give it a rim and a hub I just like the appearance of that better so it will need deburring again after that operation on the lathe otherwise go ahead and, and uh, deburr both sides on the drill press to whatever depth you desire and you think looks good This is my setup on the Atlas lathe to make that recess. I'm using this uh, type of tool holder in the facing position. I left about a quarter inch rim and I went in about a sixteenth of an inch toward the headstock. And there it is. Holes are countersunk. All I need now is a set screw and that could go right through one of the holes like that. Probably a, about an 832 set screw for a 316's hole. Now you can dish this out much more if you want. Remember the whole idea with a flywheel is to get the weight out toward the outside so we don't need the weight here at all. So that's what she looks like and uh, this needs to be polished up a little bit on the, on the outside here that never has been touched. What do you think? And there it is, a rose between two thorns. I don't know if I like it quite as well as a spoked flywheel, but uh, still looks pretty good. And that's how you do a bolt circle on the milling machine using the digital readout. Be sure and watch the three other upcoming videos with uh, variations on this theme. Also bolt circles and how to do it by different methods. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.